What's up, Bozo Buster Top Team? This is IQ Wrestler. Got a sick Strike Force card coming up this weekend from a Wales Vagina. I'm just going to give my predictions real quick. This on paper might be Strike Force's most stacked card yet. Um, I mean, it's really incredible uh, when you think about some of the fights they're putting on here. Um, and it's unfortunate that this will probably be one of the last couple of cards this stacked, I mean, with the buyout and everything, you got to think, eventually, you know, Zufa are going to come in and try and pass off shit wrapped in tin foil as diamond earrings, like they do with their pay-per-views. Um, but, you know, can't worry about that right now. Worry about that when it happens. Uh, for now, I've got an awesome show. Um, some amazing fights, some fights I'm so looking forward to. I'm not going to run down all the undercard shit. I will, however, talk about my boy, the pound for pound most badass motherfucker in the entire sport, Hiroyuki Takaya, getting stuck on the unaired prelims. Uh, he's fighting Robert Patara. Um, you know, I can't believe. He's getting stuck on unaired prelims. The guy was in the main event at Dynamite. And he fucking won. He's the dream featherweight champion. And he's not even getting aired. Now that's some fucking straight up bullshit. That's some peanut butter and jelly bullshit. That's what that is. It's a fucking joke. I mean, I'm so angry about that. There's been a lot of um, petitions and and stuff to try and get Takaya on some sort of uh, internet stream or something like that but you know no one's listened and it looks like that fight will go unaired uh, which is a shame because it looks like it's going to be sick um, Takaya is one of my absolute favorites the Street Fight Bancho uh, you know the guy the guy always comes to fucking fight. He comes to take your head off. If they put an old woman in there. Takaya would knock her head off. That's that's how mean this bastard is. Um, you know, I expect he'll win his fight. You know, it'll, it'll probably be a tough one. He has a habit of making his fights uh, tougher on him than they sometimes should be. But uh, I think Takaya will get that one by what else but a knockout within two rounds I'll say round two knockout and then on the main card we got Degard the Armenian Dream Musasi going up against Keith Herky Jerky Jardine um, Mike Kyle was meant to fight Degard Musasi of course had to pull out because he fucked up his hand, um, so they brought Jardine in as a re last minute replacement, you know, this is, a uh, Musashi probably smiled, I would've, uh, when they announced Jardine as a replacement, sure as shit, an easier fight than Mike Kyle would've been, um, Musashi is up there as one of the most talented motherfuckers in the whole sport. I mean, in terms of pure talent, top five, easy, top five. And, um, you know, Jardine, his shit's old, man, his style. Once his style got figured out, you know, that was it for him. I mean, his jaw was made out of origami, and once his style got figured out, you know, that, it was good night Irene, as the voice would say. Um, I expect Musashi to blow through Keith Jardine easy. I'd be surprised if Jardine uh, made it out of round one. I'll pick Musashi by whatever the fuck he wants within round one. Uh, next up is Shinya Aoki. Going up against Lyle Fancy Pants Beer Bomb. 
Uh, I'm really interested to see how Aoyoki bounces back after getting tooled by one of my favorite fighters, Chiyonotsu, uh, on Dynamite. Now, he got clowned in that fight hard, but um, Aoki's one of my favorites also. Um, you know, Beer Bomb coming off a loss to Bam Bam Healy. It was the first loss of his career. Um, but I think Aoki is just gonna, he's just in another league to Beer Bomb. I mean, I'm a little bit worried about the elbows, the new elbows rules in uh, Strike Force. Because, you know, that could mean Beer Bomb could get on top and stay chest to chest throw pitter patter elbows, try and cut Aoki, um, but I think Aoki is, you know, no one can hang, no one can hang with him uh, on the ground, on top or on bottom, you know, uh, I just think um, Aoki, every time he loses, he seems to come back better. The performance after he loses is always one of his best ones. I mean, there was the Gilbert Melendez fight, and then the fight with Karajiri, uh, which a lot of people thought Karajiri would win, and Aoki busts out an Achilles lock straight away and wins the fight. Um, so I think Aoki will get this. Uh, submission, of course, what else? But uh, in a round, maybe two. So yeah, I think Aoki will get this pretty easily. Um, Beer Bomb isn't on that level yet. And these fancy pants won't be enough to save him. And then we got the Strike Force Lightweight Championship fight. Gilbert El Nino Melendez going up against Tatsuya, the Crusher Karajiri. One of my very favorite fighters. Uh, oh man. You yeah, know, this is a real pick and fight. It could easily go either way. Uh, the first fight, of course, a couple of years back, Melinda has got the decision. I didn't agree with the decision, of course. I'm a fanboy, you know. Uh, And I just, oh man, this is such a hard fight to call. Karajiri uh, has said that he's not training uh, in a cage. He doesn't have one. I don't really know if that's going to make much of a difference. Um, this will be tough. I think... Karajiri has the edge in the wrestling and on the ground uh, if he gets on top. But honestly, I don't see uh, Melendez taking him down. Uh, on the feet, it's, it's close. Uh, now, I would give the edge to Melendez there uh, just a bit. Oh um, man, but you know, this could go either way, but I, I just see something in Karajiri uh, leading up to this fight, you know, he, he, he looks ready, uh, he, he knows this is his time, it's, it's really now or never for him, I mean, he's getting up there a bit, and a lot of ring wear on Karajiri, um, but you know, I see a fire in his eyes, uh, and he's ready, and his style is made for the cage. I mean, the wrestling style, he, he's up there with Miata uh, on guys who I think could do exceptionally well in the States and in the cage. Um, you know, again, it could go either way, but out of fandom, uh, I will pick the Crusher by a decision. I don't see either guy finishing. Uh, one or the other, they're both incredibly tough bastards. Um, but I think the Crusher will get the decision. And finally, finally, 
finally break uh, the Japanese curse for fighting in the States. That Strike Force lightweight title is going back to Japan. I feel it. Then in the main event, we got the Strike Force Welterweight Championship. Nick Diaz versus Paul Daly. Uh, very surprised at the lack of trash talk uh, between these two leading up in this fight. They seem, they seem to respect each other. I mean, I saw Nick Diaz interview with uh, Ariel Shilwani, and um, <laughs> I mean, how can you not love Nick Diaz? I mean, the guy is the realest motherfucker in the sport. I mean, he has no filter. He says what he thinks, and uh, you got to respect the hell out of that. I think, um, jeez, man, Paul Daly, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think Paul Daly brings nothing new to the table. Nothing new to the table for Nick Diaz. I'm a big Semtex fan. Uh, even after he sucker punch cross check and everything. I mean, I love watching the guy fight. Uh, and standing up across his skills. Um, you know, they need no hype or any, they speak for themselves. But I, I think Nick Diaz has just fought so many great strikers. I mean, Domi, KJ Nunes, Zoromskis. Uh, Cyborg, you know, all these guys, extremely powerful strikers, and he's just, Nick Diaz has just taken everything they've got and still come out on top. I mean, I mean, you can say Paul Daly um, is better than all those guys striking, and that may be so, but the fact remains Nick Diaz has beaten some of the best strikers out there, you know, very easy. I mean, he's taken all their best and and hasn't stopped. I mean, his chin is fucking granite, granite chin. Pound for pound, one of the best chins in the sport. And um, I feel like Paul Daly's chin hasn't been tested. I mean, he's never been in a real, um, in a real scrappy fight before. He's never had a guy test his stand-up um, and go toe to toe with him before. I mean, he's been he's been uh, dominated by grapplers like Koscheck and Jake Shields and all that, but he's never had a guy who go toe to toe with him. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. If Nick Diaz did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paul Daly, that's how big the set of balls on him is. Um, I think Nick Diaz has got this. I think he'll take Paul Daly's best, and obviously the longer it goes, the more it favours Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz can fight all day. Um, I think Nick Diaz is going to get the TKO. I think he's going to put Paul Daly away standing. That's what I think. Uh, the round, I will say, round three or four. Um, I have no doubt in my mind, Nick Diaz will eat some massive shots. Um, but he's weathered that storm before, and I see no reason to believe he won't weather that storm again and put Paul Daly away. Um, it'll be a great fight anyway. be a great fight. Uh, that's the card. You know, again, super stacked. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. Uh, I thought I was going to miss it there for a minute because uh, I have to go away on a trip uh, to my nan's. <laughs> So, uh, I thought I was going to miss it, but I'll, I'll actually be able to see it. So, um, I, you know, I'm really happy about that. And uh, I can't wait to see one of the last true Strike Force shows um, before it all gets fucked up. Yep, I think that's about it. 
Don't be looking in my eyes, son. I got no candy for you. No candy. Get the fuck out of here.